Have you ever pondered upon the mysteries of the seven trumpets and seven bowls as depicted in the King James Bible? This question invites us to delve into a world of prophecy and divine judgment, a realm where the spiritual and the physical intersect in a profound narrative of the end times. In the book of Revelation, two significant series of events are described, the sounding of the seven trumpets and the pouring out of the seven bowls. These are not arbitrary occurrences, but divine judgments and manifestations of God's wrath unleashed upon the world during the last days. The seven trumpets, introduced in Revelation chapter 8, herald a series of catastrophic events affecting both the natural and spiritual realms. Each trumpet's blast marks the commencement of a new judgment, which include natural disasters, plagues, and spiritual warfare on a scale beyond human comprehension. Similarly, the seven bowls, detailed in Revelation chapter 16, signify God's final, swift, and complete judgment upon a rebellious world. Each bowl's pouring triggers a specific calamity, ranging from severe physical afflictions upon the wicked to dramatic changes in the natural world. Both the trumpets and bowls serve as divine responses to the world's escalating wickedness. Their purpose is not only to judge, but also to offer humanity a chance to recognize its need for redemption and turn to God. Interestingly, the unfolding of these events coincides with an increase in earthquakes akin to labor pains before childbirth, a metaphor used by Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 24. This comparison suggests a world in travail awaiting a momentous event, the rapture. The rapture, a term synonymous with the end times, is the anticipated moment when believers in Christ will be caught up to meet him in the air, a topic we'll delve into further in our upcoming scenes. So, what comes before this momentous event? What follows it? And what exactly happens during the rapture? Let's dive into the chronological order of events as they unfold in the scriptures. The first trumpet heralds the onset of God's wrath, but what does it entail? Let's journey through the sequence of the seven trumpets as described in the book of Revelation. The first trumpet's sounding sends a storm of hail and fire mingled with blood to the earth, burning up a third of the trees and all of the green grass. This catastrophic event mirrors the plagues of Egypt, serving as a stark reminder of divine judgment. Next, the second trumpet. As it sounds, something akin to a great burning mountain plunges into the sea. Instantly, a third of the sea turns into blood, a third of the creatures in the sea die, and a third of the ships are destroyed. A vivid depiction of chaos and destruction. The third trumpet takes us further into the calamity. As it sounds, a great star named Wormwood falls from the heavens, poisoning a third of the world's fresh water sources. Many perish from the bitter waters, symbolizing the bitter consequences of turning away from God's righteousness. With the fourth trumpet, a third of the sun, the moon, and the stars are darkened. Day and night lose a third of their light, casting a gloom over the earth, a potent symbol of the spiritual darkness that engulfs those who reject the light of God's truth. Then comes the fifth trumpet, introducing a new kind of horror. A star falls from the sky, opening the abyss and releasing a swarm of locusts. These aren't ordinary locusts, but demonic creatures that torment those who do not bear the seal of God. The sixth trumpet releases four angels who have been bound at the river Euphrates. These angels lead a vast army that kills a third of mankind, signifying the catastrophic consequences of humanity's rebellion against God. Finally, the seventh trumpet. Its sound doesn't bring more destruction, but rather an announcement. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. With the sounding of the seventh trumpet, we witness a shift in the narrative, a transition into the next phase, the seven bowls. As the bowls start to pour, the earth experiences God's wrath in its full intensity. But what exactly happens? We dive into a sequence of events that are both mesmerizing and terrifying. As the first bowl descends, those who bear the mark of the beast are inflicted with painful sores. These are not your average afflictions, but are sores imbued with divine wrath a physical manifestation of the spiritual corruption they represent. With the pouring of the second bowl, the seas transform into blood. Imagine the vast oceans, once teeming with life, now a lifeless expanse of blood. The third bowl extends this blood transformation to the rivers and springs, the life-giving waters of the world, sources of sustenance, now mirrors of death. The fourth bowl brings extreme heat, the sun scorches with fire, the intense heat is not just physical, but symbolizes the spiritual purification process. Then comes the fifth bowl, plunging the kingdom of the beast into darkness. This isn't just a simple absence of light. It's a deep, profound darkness, a metaphorical representation of spiritual blindness and ignorance. 
The sixth bowl dries up the great river Euphrates, making way for the kings from the east. This event signifies the gathering of nations for the final battle, a prelude to the end. Finally, the seventh bowl results in the greatest earthquake ever experienced. Cities crumble, islands disappear, and mountains are no more. It's a seismic event unlike any other, a testament to the supreme power of the divine. Each bowl unravels a new layer of divine judgment, each more intense than the last. They are not just physical disasters, but symbols of spiritual consequences. They are reminders of the divine justice that awaits those who choose wickedness over righteousness, darkness over light. The series of devastating events lead us to a pivotal point in biblical prophecy, the rapture. The cataclysmic unfolding of the seven bowls sets the stage for this monumental event, a moment of divine intervention that will forever change the course of humanity. The rapture, a term that stirs both fear and anticipation, but what transpires during this event? The rapture, as described in the King James Bible, is a moment of profound magnitude. It is when believers, those who have accepted Christ as their savior, are caught up to meet him in the air. It's a moment when the spiritual and physical realms intertwine and the earthly bonds that tether us are momentarily released. The event begins with a divine call, a trumpet blast of God, and the voice of an archangel. The first to answer this call are the dead in Christ. They rise first, their bodies transform from mortal to immortal, from perishable to imperishable. Their spirits, which have been with the Lord since their earthly departure, are reunited with their glorified bodies. But the rapture doesn't stop there. It also includes those who are alive and believe in Him. These believers are transformed in the twinkling of an eye. Their bodies, like those of the risen dead, are changed from mortal to immortal, from perishable to imperishable. They are caught up together with the resurrected believers to meet the Lord in the air. This moment is one of joyful reunion, a gathering of the global church, the body of Christ, with their Savior. It is a promise of hope and comfort, a reminder that death has been defeated and that believers will be with the Lord forever. Yet the rapture also signifies a critical turning point. It marks the end of the church age and the beginning of the tribulation period. This is a time of great trial and turmoil, a period of divine judgment upon a world that has rejected God's love and mercy in Christ. After the believers are taken, the world faces a period of tribulation such as it has never seen before. This is a time prophesied to be filled with unimaginable hardships and challenges. But even then, the promise remains. Those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. What precedes the rapture and what follows it? The answers lie in the scriptures. As we journey through the pages of the King James Bible, we encounter signs that are prophesied to precede the rapture. One of these signs is an increase in earthquakes. These seismic activities are not random or incidental. Instead, they are described metaphorically as labor pains, intensifying over time, signaling the imminent birth of a new era. The earth, in its throes of pain, mirrors the spiritual unrest and moral decay of humanity, warning us to brace for a significant divine event. The rapture, according to biblical prophecy, is that momentous event when believers will be caught up to meet Christ in the air, an event filled with hope and anticipation for those who have placed their faith in Him. This event acts as a demarcation line, separating the now from the then, the before from the after. Post-rapture, the world will enter a period known as the Tribulation. This period, characterized by unprecedented suffering and turmoil, is a time of divine judgment on earth. The world, left reeling from the rapture, will experience the outpouring of God's wrath, as depicted in the sequence of the seven trumpets and bowls. However, it's crucial to remember that even in the midst of this tribulation, God's mercy shines through. The severity of the tribulation is not meant to annihilate, but to awaken humanity, to stir the hearts of those left behind to seek redemption. The final judgment, as prophesied, follows the tribulation. It is a time of reckoning, where every individual will stand before God. But it is also a time of ultimate restoration where God establishes His eternal kingdom, marking the end of suffering and the beginning of everlasting peace. The seven trumpets and bowls and the rapture are profound aspects of biblical prophecy underscoring the power, justice, and mercy of God.